What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here, and today we have another massive coffee revelation. Now let me ask you a question. Do you think that seasoning your coffee grinder is effective? This is a question that has split the coffee enthusiast crowd almost down the middle. There are people who think it's just a bunch of noise, it's silly, it doesn't make any difference, you're stupid if you do it, you're wasting coffee, and then you have the acolytes of grinder seasoning saying, this is what baristas do, this is what is necessary, I actually notice a big difference in my taste. Which one is it? It's one of those myths that has somehow taken root in the history of coffee. But today we're gonna explore what seasoning actually does. I have been an acolyte for seasoning coffee grinders. I've not necessarily said you must season your grinder for it to be better, but I've been very clear with my thoughts over the past few years that seasoning will affect your grind distribution and in a positive way. I've also been clear to say that with different grinders, the need for seasoning is gonna vary greatly. So for instance, I've always said with cone burrs, I don't think the need for seasoning is as high. And with flat burrs, I think it's much higher. And the bigger the flat burr is, the more need there is. Now, some of you watching may be asking, okay, Lance, dude, what do you mean by seasoning? Are we taking the burrs out and we put them in an oven coated in some oil? It's a term that's been used to refer to throwing coffee through burrs and allowing them to chew up different beans and it does something that we call seasoning. Now, some people do tout that it's the oils from the coffee that is getting on and coating those burrs and at those high temperatures, they can kind of do a similar effect to what's happening with your cast iron pan. Those burrs, when they arrive to you, are incredibly sharp, especially these flat burrs, and they are actually producing too many fines by an aggressive fracture point. And so when you throw beans in, it's helping dull those incredibly sharp edges to a more reasonable sharpness that will last a much longer time. Once those sharp edges have been dulled off, you have an improved particle distribution. Rice can be a little harmful to the motor and a lot of people just don't recommend using that, but you can use cheap, darker roasted coffees that are not dense at all and you can season your grinder that way. Well, if grinder manufacturers aren't pre-seasoning burrs, then it obviously doesn't mean anything. Wrongo, there are some that try to, to pre-season and there are ways to pre-season burrs. I know that there's one way of putting burrs into kind of a mixer with coffee grounds in it. You can just sit there and let them mix over coffee grounds for hours at a time, but that's labor intensive, takes a long time. You can also sandblast the burrs. That is also a way to do it. But again, that takes more time, more effort. It's much easier to cut your burrs, put them in a box, put them in the grinder, ship it out, good to go. The study I'm about to show you is by my friend, Dr. Mark Alshamari, who's out in the Netherlands. He took the EK-43 with standard burrs, a fellow ode with Gen 1 burrs, and then a fellow ode with Super Jolly burrs from Mazer, and he measured every five kilograms. The way that these grinders react are not going to be applicable to every grinder on the market. As I already said, I do think there is a varying degree of how much coffee is needed to season a grinder. And maybe these smaller cone burr grinders like the Encore, they may not need much seasoning, if any, at all. Now we'll go over first the EK-43, and he measured at zero with a triplicate of a 25 gram dose. So that means he measured three times with a 25 gram dose with no seasoning at five kilograms, at 10 kilograms, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and had 60 minute spans between grinding to allow the grinder to cool down. In that first five kilograms, what he saw immediately was a drastic reduction in fines production at the same grinder setting and an increase in the median particle size. Now, what does that mean? When I talk about fines, I mean those tiny little shards that come off that are below like 100 microns or so. Everyone defines them differently, sub 50, sub 100, whatever. But essentially the little pieces of powder that sometimes get through your espresso basket into your cup and cause the modeling and all that good stuff. And he saw a shift of the median particle peak, which is also known as the nominal peak, or or in layman's terms, it's the grind size that you visually see when you kind of sprinkle out the grounds. The bigger grind size that tends to be what is the most uniform in whatever grinder that you have. With cheaper grinders, it has been noticed that if you get to a certain extent with coarser grinds and then that medium peak starts to decrease yet again. But with the EK, it seems that the coarser you go, the less fines it produces in perpetuity. There was a shift in that medium particle peak to the right with less fines, which means at the same grinder setting, let's say you're set on a number five on whatever grinder you have, it will start to be grinding more coarsely the more you season the grinder. 
There was still a change at 10 kilograms, still a change at 15, and then a minor one at 20, and it didn't really flatline until after about that 20 kilogram mark, which is when those burrs were fully settled in. And that's where they're gonna be the most consistent. This is a very important thing. I would actually recommend seasoning if, if you have an EK-43 or something along those lines with those bigger burrs. You're gonna have variability and volatility when you open your shop, unless you go through and season those burrs. Is this something that should be your problem? No. I think that there should be something done at Hemro, at Barats, at all these different places where they're taking care of that seasoning thing. It should not be the onus of the customer to go through and fix whatever issue there is. But the reality is they're not. And that's not cool. And it's probably because no one has ever said with a certainty that there is a massive change going on. But we can now say that. Some people say seasoning also helps with micro burrs, but thankfully a lot of grinder companies don't have that low of quality of burr cutting process. There are some with the cheaper grinders and you may need to season to get rid of these micro little burrs that are created because of less than perfect cutting technology. But they should still be able to go through and do what is necessary in order to give you the most consistent outcome right when you get a grinder. Jonathan Gagne did point out with his own application he wrote, and he noticed that with his EG1 with ultra low fine spurs that there was a shift, but his results were kind of relegated to that one $4,000 grinder with really expensive burrs that are known for producing really low fines and are outside of the norm. And so it doesn't seem like many people paid much attention at the time, though I kind of use it as a use case to show burr seasoning's effect outside of just experience. Let's move on to the fellow owed results, and this is interesting. So he used the Gen 1 burrs, which are notorious for grinding much too coarse. And so he went down to the setting one, which is the lowest setting he could get on there, and it still was only producing coffees with an extraction yield of about 12% for pour over, which is crazy. I, I would like to know the methodology behind it because that's an impressively low number. I don't even know how you would get that low. So then he took out those Gen 1 burrs because there was just too much variability, even in the few sample sizes he took, which he does note is kind of common at really coarse grind sizes, there can be more volatility in the particle size reading than at finer grind settings. But anyway, he put in super jolly burrs. So on that super jolly burrs, there was a big difference in seasoning as well, though the biggest results again happened around that five kilogram mark. He notes that this is a similar thing to calibrating a grinder, and he has a whole other article about calibration that you should check out. I'll put down below as well. So if you go coarser, you are shifting the median peak and you're getting lesser fines. And to an extent, it's a similar shift, though not identical, whenever you're seasoning the grinder. He also was measuring the, those Turkish burrs versus the stock EK-43 burrs. And what, what he noticed was pretty incredible. I'd never seen particle distributions for the Turkish burrs in the EK-43. The finer you go, those two peaks do become more and more even, though you always maintain that higher nominal peak for the coarser grounds. With the Turkish burrs, you have a similar thing until you get to about that espresso grind setting, and then it turns into like one weird fat mound where it's like all fines, which is wild to me. This doesn't have anything to do with this video, but that's just like one example of how drastically the burr geometry can absolutely change up everything about the taste of the coffee. 100%. Same thing with like the base burrs. He puts in there different readings at 500 to 1000 RPM and 1000 to 1500. And there are bigger differences between the particle distributions between 500 and 1000 RPM and 1000 and 1500 RPM. And that's because these burrs Doug Weber created in order to emulate cone burrs. And we know in cone burrs, RPM greatly affects the particle size distribution. But it looks like there are limits with RPM as to how big that effect is. I'm making this because I truly believe a lot of people, and I've seen posts like this all over the place, they'll get a new grinder because they see a lot of hype around it and they try it 20 times. And they're like, it's just not good. I'm gonna sell it and get something else. You didn't even give a chance to season the grinder. People got the new DF83 and they say, I got this and I have to change the grind setting every time I use it. Yeah, because it's not seasoned. There's massive variability. Those are big burrs and they're flat burrs and they're not pre-seasoned. You need to season them if you don't want variability. If you don't want to waste the coffee to not season, that's absolutely fine. Then you're going to have a present one day when it's fully settled in and you have consistency all of a sudden and better tasting coffee. Yay, hallelujah. But until then, you're going to have variability. 
what I like to do is over season everything I get so I get to the point where the grinder is gonna act like it will for the majority of its lifespan. For me, if this is the lifespan of the grinder and pre-seasoning is only this much, represents this much of that timeline, why the heck would I review that? That doesn't make any sense. If you just bought a grinder or you've had a grinder for just a little bit of time and you've not put in an adequate amount of coffee, there is a good chance there's gonna be variability in especially your espresso grind settings. And that is not necessarily an inherent flaw with the grinder. It's likely just that those burrs are still being seasoned. If you're gonna season your grinder, make sure that you have nice ventilation. If you're gonna season your grinder, pay attention to the duty cycle of your grinder. You don't wanna overload it and mess your grinder up. Maybe split it over days. Choose cheap coffee, don't go really fine. You don't wanna overdo the motor. Go at it like a medium grind size with cheap coffee that's dark. Let's make sure that you have taken the time and the consideration to maybe improve the alignment of your grinder. Or maybe you've attended to cleaning your grinder on a weekly or every other week basis so that you're having clean coffees. Make sure that you're actually taking care of your setup because seasoning your grinder won't mean much if you're not actually taking care of your grinder. Seasoning will help a lot of grinders. And my argument is that bigger burrs, sharper burrs are gonna need a lot more seasoning than smaller burrs. So if you have an 83 mil grinder, it'll take a lot more until you start noticing the effects than something like a 55 millimeter. So I just wanna say thank you again to Dr. Mark Alshamari. He does not have to do this. This is not his job to make particle distributions on the effects of seasoning on a grinder, but he did and I'm grateful for it. So make sure you follow him on Instagram and check out his medium. I'll have that all linked below. Thank you, Jonathan Gagne for doing things years ago about seasoning and for always consulting with me on like every video ever and texting me every day. Thank you for all of you viewing this video. Make sure you check out the Patreon below, my Instagram, as well as my second YouTube. All of that I put, put content out on. We do competitions for giveaways for like loads of equipment and liking and subscribing all that really helps i hope this was helpful okay and i hope that we put a myth to rest that seasoning doesn't help because it absolutely does and if you're a coffee shop make sure you are seasoning because you don't want that variability during a rush anyway once more thank you again i hope that you brew something tasty today preferably with seasoned burrs and cheers